and this webinar is being recorded, and I would like to welcome you all to the uh, Women Veterans Alliance, our member webinar. Um, this is one of the added benefits of being a Women Veterans Alliance member. I am Melissa Washington. I'm the founder and CEO of Women Veterans Alliance. Um, but we have opened this webinar to um, everyone that is interested in learning more about the uh, VA home loan guarantee. There's a lot of um, myths out there, and um, Shelly is here, and she's going to um, share that with you. So the format, what's going to be is um, we're going to go through the um, slides that Shelly has put together. We are going to use the chat box, so if you do have questions, we want this to be interactive, um, feel free to put those in the chat box, and we'll make sure that all of your questions will get answered, and Shelly will also share her contact information. Um, so without further ado, I would like um, to introduce Shelly Heimer. She is an Army veteran, and she is a certified expert that's been doing loans now for over 18 years, and she is located down in the beautiful San Diego area. And Shelly, um, let you take it from here. Hi ladies, thank you very much for attending today. I'm really honored to get to share my knowledge and insight with you on VA loans. I transferred, when I transitioned out of the military, like many of us, I wasn't quite sure what I was gonna do with my life. And at the time, a friend of mine was in the real estate business and said, hey, why don't you get into real estate? Well, within a couple of months, I realized that it was a perfect fit. Been doing it for almost 18 years now and it allows me the flexibility to work from home, which especially during this time right now is very beneficial to many of us, and raise my three daughters and make a difference in the lives of veterans and homeowners. So I'm really honored to be here. Thank you very much to Women's Veteran Alliance for the opportunity. We're just gonna go through a few slideshows and then we're gonna open it up for questions and answers and myth busting of VA home loans. So we'll take it on to the next slide and we'll just go over a few of VA basic overviews. So a VA loan is not done by the VA, meaning the VA does not lend money to the veteran. The money is lent to you by different agencies. So VA insures the money to a percentage, meaning that if the veteran were to default, the veteran would insure that part of that money was paid back to the lender that guaranteed them, that lent the money. So you can do a VA loan with no down payment, Sorry, I got distracted with the pop-up down there. You can do a VA loan with no down payment. Um, that's based on your entitlement. So you can do that with no monthly mortgage insurance. They do charge a VA funding fee. So when we get to the, a few slides down, I'll show you with the VA funding fee, but that's how VA recoups its cost for defaulted loans is by the VA funding fee. This loan allows veterans to qualify for loan amounts which are larger than more traditional conventional loans. They do allow for seller financing um, up to 4% of the appraised value. So sellers can give you 4% to apply towards your closing cost and the VA funding fee. Um, loans are fully assumable. So meaning that your VA loan, if you decide to um, let a family member, your daughter, your child, your son, um, assume your loan. They do not have to be a veteran to do that. So they're assumable to any qualified individual. That means that they do have to qualify for the loan, but they don't have to have a VA entitlement. There are no prepayment penalties on a VA loan, and you are eligible for both cash out and interest rate reduction loans. And we're going to go into interest rate reduction loans a little more clearly later on down the line. Not sure how many people we have in here that are already have a VA loan or those that are looking to buy. So if you have any questions about the difference between purchasing and EARLs, I'll get to those in the chat section. Your typical VA borrower is gonna be your first time home buyer, someone that has never bought a home before and has very limited ability for a down payment. They also are seeking to finance a home with maybe a shaky credit history or limited closing cost. Also, you're gonna look at homeowners who wanna refinance. You don't have to be in a VA loan to refinance into a VA loan. If you're in a conventional loan and you wanna refinance into a VA loan, you're eligible to do that. Um, we can go to the next slide, Melissa. Let me see. Maybe. There you go. In 2020, there were a lot of changes to regulations and qualifying. 
um, one of the most exciting ones that the Blue Water Act allowed veterans with medical conditions that were caused by Agent Orange or herbicide exposure during Vietnam to now qualify for higher loan limits. So this applies across the board to all veterans, but it did enact when the Blue Water Act started. Because there are no upper loan limits anymore, you could finance a home 100% financing up to a million and a half dollars. Before that was limited based on the county that you resided in, that's no longer the case. Um, there has been an increase to the VA funding fees, which we'll go over in the funding fee chart momentarily. And now, Purple Heart recipients are now exempt from paying a VA funding fee, where before, the only person exempt from a funding fee were those that were actually receiving disability of 10% or greater. So there's two different types of loan limits. There's conforming loan limit and high balance and jumbo loan limit depending on your county is gonna determine rates. So if you were to buy a house for $1.2 million and your county limit that you live in is $500,000, you're gonna pay what's called jumbo rates on those. So they'll be a little bit higher. If you have never used your VA loan and you have served more than 90 days of active duty, you're entitled to your full entitlement of VA loan. If you have used your entitlement or VA loan before, you can reinstate it to use it on another purchase. So the common myth about VA loans is that once you've used it, you're not eligible to use it again, or they can't have more than one VA loan. That is not the case. You can do both. So as long as the initial loan has been paid off, your reinstatement is eligible to full entitlement. If that loan has not been paid off. Say you bought a house in Texas where the county limits are much smaller and then you relocate to San Diego where the county limits are much higher, you can leave that VA loan in Texas intact and qualify for dual entitlement in California. You won't be able to necessarily go to 1.2 million because you'll exceed the VA eligibility on that. So depending on how much the loan amount was in Texas, VA has a very easy formula for converting that to what you could qualify for in that follow-up county. Okay. We'll go to the next slide. Okay, so we just briefly went over the entitlement a few minutes ago, but what I wanna talk about now is I wanna talk about the changes in the VA funding fee. So if you look at this chart at the bottom of the screen, there's brackets on the type of loan down payment and percentage of use for first time or subsequent use. The purchase loans, if you wanna put zero down and you are not exempt, you will pay 2.3% for the first time you use it and 3.6 for the second, third, fourth, fifth time you use it. If you are exempt, meaning if you are a Purple Heart recipient or you are disabled, you don't pay any of these funding fees ever on any time you do your VA loan. So that 2.3% could be relatively high depending on the purchase price. However, VA does allow you to include it in the loan amount. So you don't have to pay that out of pocket. And even though it seems like it's a lot of money, you can't buy a house anywhere with 2.3% down. So if you were gonna compare it to like an FHA loan, the minimum down payment for that loan is 3.3% or 3.5. Plus they have an FHA funding fee of 1.75. So that's how government lending works is they all charge either a funding fee or they call it something different, uh, upfront MIP or guarantee fee. So that's how they're able to lend and insure these loans is by charging these, these funding fees. So if you go down, if you do a cash out refinance, you're still gonna pay a funding fee. If you do an EARL or an assumption, that's where you have reduced funding fee cost, and they're only a half a point. And those two also get added to the loan amount. So you don't have to pay those out of pocket unless, of course, you choose to do that. Okay, let's go to the next slide. Okay, so over the last couple of years, there has been a lot of changes on the EARLs. There were a lot of lenders in our industry who have given us a bad name for VA loans. The biggest one is what we call churning. So lenders would just 
turn over VA loans because they pay high on the back end to lenders. So they can make a lot of money doing VA loans and then just refinancing them time after time. Anytime the rates drop, they'd call up their VA borrower and say, hey, do an interest rate reduction. You probably, if you have a VA loan, get a million notifications in the mail all the time about refinancing. It's because there used to be no regulations on how a veteran could refinance. Now there are, and they really are for our best interest. So you have to have a half a point lower in interest rate when you're going from a fixed rate to a fixed rate. So if you're going from an arm, like if you had an adjustable rate at a 10 year and you went to a fixed rate, that is in a best interest of the veteran. So you can do that. But if you're going from a 30 year to a 30 year, you have to save a half a point. You cannot have any lates in the last six months and you cannot have refinanced in the last six months either. So they're making sure that the veteran isn't being taken advantage on these VA EARLs. And they have to do what's called a recoupment analysis, meaning that if you're saving half a percent, you haven't made a payment in, or you haven't, um, I'm sorry, skipped a payment or you've made six payments and you're saving a half a, per, half a percent, you have to have 36 months of recoupment fees. So let's say you're closing costs are $5,000. You have to divide the $5,000 into the savings of the monthly payment to be eligible for an interest rate reduction loan. You can still roll all the closing costs and prepaids into these loans. And prepaids are your insurance, your taxes, and what they do to set up your impounds. So you can still add those, but they're only going to take the hard closing cost into that recoupment calculation. So when you talk to a loan officer about refinancing a VA loan and they want to make sure you're meeting the recoupment analysis, that's what they're referring to. When you do these loans, you do not have to have any income, any assets, or an appraisal unless you're going into an ARM loan. So they just want to make sure that if you go into an adjustable rate mortgage and the the rates go up that you can still qualify for the higher rates. So you do have to qualify on ARM EARLs, but not on fixed rate EARLs. Okay, let's go to the next screen. I, oh, I think that might be our last screen. So the last screen. It is, and then I had a, a miss and misconception screen slideshow that didn't get in there. So I just want to go over, I'm going to go over the top 10 myths about VA loans. If you want to just go back to the Women's Veterans page, so it's just not this background information, then I'll go over the top 10 myths and then we can open it up for frequently asked questions. So the number one question is, can I get a VA loan if I've had a foreclosure or bankruptcy in the past? Yes, you can. VA is probably one of the most lenient loans out there for people with shady credit history. And you just have to have 12 months of no derogatories after your bankruptcy and show some reestablished credit. Um, somebody asked, I used my eligibility already. We already talked about that. You are entitled to use your eligibility on multiple times. Some have said, I thought veterans, I thought it was only for veterans and I'm still on active duty. As long as you've served more than 91 days on active duty, you are eligible to use your entitlement. Uh, VA appraisers are a nightmare. That's probably the number one question that comes out with realtors. So if you talk to a realtor and you tell them you're qualified for a VA loan, some realtors, if they're not experienced in doing VA loans or home buyers, are gonna have a lot of resistance to old school belief that VA loans are harder than any other loan out there. That's not true. VA loans can certainly close in 30 days if you are using a certified VA lender and realtor. They have this negative impression because VA does require that the home meet certain standards. So on a conventional loan, they don't have to go as in stringent guidelines as VA or any other government loan does but their health and safety purposes. They have to have a furnace or a heat source. They have to have flooring. They have to have adequate plumbing. So those conditions that VA require are no different 
than FHA or a USDA government insured loan. So don't let that scare you. And if your re realtor seems to have any resistance, you might wanna find a realtor that has been trained on doing VA. Um, the veterans are guaranteed a VA home loan. Well, you are, you are guaranteed your entitlement, but not necessarily a home loan. So if you're buying a home in California, there is also CalVet, and people ask all the time if we're qualified to do CalVet. CalVet, you go directly through, and they can finance on programs such as um, manufactured on leased land. So if you wanted to buy a home that was in a, in a park that was on leased lands, you would want to do CalVet for that versus a VA loan because lenders don't insure on leased land. CalVet's rates are published online. They tend to be about a half a point higher than your standard VA loan. And there's only a handful of reasons that you would go to CalVet and that would be derogatory credit that's current or leased land. Um, can you use your, B, your GI Bill income to qualify? Unfortunately, you cannot because that income isn't permanent. You can use your disability income and because it's non-taxable, we gross it up 125%. So unfortunately though, they do not use the GI Bill income for qualifying. Those are the most common myths that I see come across my desk. And we still have about 10 minutes left. So if you want to answer, do some questions and answer, you can go ahead and type it into the chat and Melissa's going to read them for us. Yep. And we have one right now um, and it comes from Lisa. She asked if, if you have a service connected disability, you don't have to pay taxes. So she just wants clarifications on being service connected and paying taxes. So that is county specific, depending on what county you live in, like San Diego, we have Prop 60. So you can apply to the county to have the taxes either reduced or eliminated. For San Diego, you have to be 100% service connected, but I'm not sure what each county is, but that is very true. Yes, and there also has been um, legislation that's tried to pass where um, they want to have no property taxes for any um, disability because some states do that, but some states also do a tiered. So if right. you're hundred percent, it's no um, property tax, you know, then if you're 80, then it's, it's tiered. So unfortunately, you know, um, well in here in California, I know we have people probably from all over, but I would always just check with your, your county and your state regarding your property taxes. Um, so um, let's see, we have a question. Is there a minimum credit score required to purchase a home? No. So there are no credit score requirements, but remember because VA doesn't actually lend the money, you have to find a lender which is willing to accommodate lower scores. So the standard score across the board right now is you wanna be above a 660. If you're below a 660, you're gonna have more restrictions on qualifying abilities and they're going to want to see compensating factors. For example, they're going to want to see, is your credit low, credit score low because of recent issues that could hinder you or render you from being able to make the mortgage payment? Or are they based on a past divorce, illness, or something that you went through in transitioning? They're going to look at making sure that your last 12 months are pretty solid and they will require 12 month rental history. Great. Um, someone asked, they're still waiting on their VA rating. Does that affect the loan? Or how does it affect the loan? And does it affect it at all? Okay, so if you are not yet approved for your rating, you would be charged that 2.6% 2, 2 funding fee up front. But if you've already submitted your disability and then it gets approved, they'll retroactive that and cut you a check back for your disability or for the funding fee. So depending on how you pay it. So if you pay it cash, up front, they'll send you a check back. If you add it to the loan amount, they'll do a principal reduction for that amount onto the loan balance. And um, it was also shared that CalVet won't do it on leased land. It says it has to be stationary permanent, not mobile. Mobile home has to be less Correct. than 20 years old. Correct. Um, thank you for the correction. Yes, CalVet will do it on leased land as long as it's affixed to the property. 
All right, uh, let's see. Santa Clara County, California, their upper loan limit is 720,000, but you mentioned maybe up to 1.5 million. Yeah, so that was part of the Blue Water Act and that does eliminate any caps on VA loans. You, there's unlimited, you can finance over the county limits, doesn't matter. It, the hard part right now is going to be finding a lender that doesn't put any overlays and will allow the unlimited caps on there. And because of COVID right now, anything that's considered high balance or jumbo, which like you said, is going to be your Santa Clara over 720, those rates are really, really hard to come by right now. Your traditional Earl or your traditional conforming loan amount is easily 2.75 today. Anything over those limits, you're going to be looking at closer to the fours and fives. We have a question regarding the debt to income ratio, uh, saying that lenders look at 33%. Um, Dawn is currently at 50% and making payments no, no problem. Could she get approved? And she said her mortgage would be less than her rent, and she's also in Santa Clara as well. Yeah, good question, Donna. Not a lot of people think to ask about debt to income. So the way debt to income is calculated is there's a front end ratio and a back end ratio. What we look at, what the front end is, they don't allow your mortgage payment to exceed 47%, bottom line. You cannot go over 47% for the mortgage, but you can go up to 50% on VA, no problem. But the front end has to stay under 47. That was, that was a happy dance, I saw it. No, these are these are um, definitely great questions. You know, and I have a question um, which I, I've seen pop up in some of the um, the Facebook groups um, with everything happening with COVID. A, a lot of um, lenders will have the forbearance. I know this is something somebody's already into their loan. Now, with that, and I, I want to make sure this is correct. So, if, if, so say the person they they say we're going to do a forbearance for how many months? They're not a lot, they, can they refi during that time or, or what are the penalties when you, when you start to get into this forbearance? Yeah, so it's new territory for all of us. Currently, if you were in forbearance and wanted to refinance, you would have to bring your forbearance amount current. So if you've only deferred one payment, that payment would have to be current. If you've deferred three payments, those three payments would have to be brought current. Each lender is going to put overlays into place to verify that your return to work status is guaranteed, but some lenders are gonna put a 12 month overlay into forbearance, meaning that you'll have to have been out of the forbearance for 12 months before eligible to refinance. The CARE Act is trying to prevent that so that as soon as your forbearance is brought current, that there's no restrictions to your ability to refinance. So fingers crossed that we hear that soon. I, I, another question is, can my son be on the loan or does it have to be another veteran? Good question too. So to do 100% financing, it has to be the veteran alone or dual veterans. So dual veterans can share their eligibility 50-50 or 75-25, however they wanna share it and can go up to 100% financing. If you wanna add a a borrower, one, they have to be occupying, so you can't have a non-occupying co-borrower, but you cannot do 100% financing. And the way it works out is you basically have to split the funding fee. So if the funding fee is, let's say it's the 2.6%, you can split the funding fee and then your non-veteran borrower has to pay that, their portion of the funding fee. So it ends up, you end up putting down about 3% of the loan amount. All right, if anyone has any other questions, um, please use this time to type those into the group chat. And while, while we're waiting for any additional questions, um, Shelly, what is the best way that um, someone can get a hold of you? The best way is email Shelly, S-H-E-L-L-Y, and if you go to the next slide, I might have that on there, at h5financial.com. My website is shellyheimer.com, and maybe it's not on there. I thought it was down at the bottom. And my phone number is 619-743-8848.
And for any, the first person to type into the chat box, what's wrong with this picture we're looking at, I'll send them a $50 Amazon gift card. I, I won't play because I know. Okay, thanks. <laughs> Um, uh, another question for you. Um, we have a, I have another question, but I have another one. Um, since you're in Southern California, where can you help people at as far as if they're looking for a new loan or refi? Yeah, so I am licensed throughout the state of California, so I can help anyone in California. Outside of California, I have a great resource of lenders that I'm connected with that I can refer you to. So if you're looking outside of California, let me know where and I'll shoot you a a vetted VA lender, and if you're in California, I can help you anywhere. All right, so we have a question um, from Jennifer, great credit, debt-free. Um, she used VA loan to buy her current home, 5%, wants to refi for cash out for 60,000. Um, she's currently unemployed, and will she be able to refi, and is the, what's the best way to go? So. Um, so if you're currently unemployed, you're going to have to do you collect any VA disability. Jennifer, you could type that in if you have a disability rating. If you do have some income coming, I think that's what she's looking for. If you have in, any income. If not, I'll wait for you to answer. If not, you would have to wait till you were back at work to be eligible for cash out. Okay, I saw the no disability. You could do a VA EARL which at this point, if you're at 5%, we could get you down to 2.75 would be significant savings and you would skip one month of payment. So it would put you a little bit, you have rental okay. income. So we might have to talk about that and see if the rental income is enough to help you. you it gets complicated because you have to show it on your taxes and you can only utilize 75% of it. So we might have to talk about that, but Unemployment does not qualify. It has to be actual W-2 employment or self-employed income. But an EARL might definitely benefit you considering the rate you're at. So maybe we should talk about that too. Those are definitely good questions. All right, any, anyone else, any other questions for Shelly? Oh, I'm just gonna go back through and make sure I got everyone. I think I did. So on the photo, do you wanna give any hints, Shelly? It doesn't have to do with social distancing. <laughs> well, they probably live in the same house, right? <laughs> right. And I saw that. Yes, that's my phone number, thank you. Lisa, I do have some great tools I can send out to you for first time home buyers if you want to shoot me an email. Trash can on the porch. Nope. Oh, no hat on her head. Lakita, good job. <laughs> All right, Lakita, go Navy. Woohoo! Okay, Lakita, right. send me your email and I will get you your Amazon gift card. Got to wear that cover outside. I um, had already sent several edits over to my uh, my marketing girl, so I didn't want to send another edit for that one. No. Okay. That's too funny. <laughs> All right, there we go. Keto, she gave you her email. Twenty-three. Thank you so much, you guys. This was so much fun for me. Um, I always enjoy sharing my insight to VA loans with in, with everybody. So if you have any questions, shoot them over to me in an email. Lakita, was that at Gmail? Um, yes. Lisa, yes. You, okay. Okay, everyone. Thank you very much for your time today. I appreciate being able to share VA loans with you. Shoot me a message if you have any questions. I'm happy to help. Thank you so much, Shelly. Welcome. Thank you.